it's time for some more XKCD what if video. Specifically, what if you drain the ocean? Good luck with that. <laughs> so where's it going? Another planet or something? <laughs> Also, good luck getting a nuclear power plant to work without water. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check this out. This question comes from Ted, who asks, how quickly would the oceans drain if a circular portal 20 meters in diameter appeared at the bottom of the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest spot in the ocean? How would the Earth change as the water was being drained? <laughs> Okay, so we're finding the lowest spot in the ocean and we're pulling the plug like the ocean's a really big bathtub or something. As far as how quickly, so what's the pressure on the opposite side of a portal if we're using magical portals? Because to get water to flow anywhere, it depends on the pressure difference. Now, at the bottom of the Challenger Deep, it's about a thousand atmospheres or about 16,000 psi or between seven and eight times more pressure than a pressurized water reactor. So that's a lot. So assuming it's another planet with Earth's atmosphere or deep space with zero pressure, it's going to be very, very fast, at least initially. And it's gradually going to go down as you lower the water level because there's less water on top of the other water pushing it down, creating that much pressure. 20 meters, I'm not sure where he got 20 meters from, but... And I think this sketch is spot on that you're going to get some type of vortex or whirlpool, and it's showing drop off as you're getting lower and lower. So I think that's the right idea. I mean, some of the big engineering challenges with subsurface is just the intense pressure that would be at the bottom of places like the Challenger Deep. Most subs don't go that deep. You need very specialized equipment in order to reach there. But a magic portal, why not? <laughs> I love the blending of science and magic with, with a lot of these uh, scenarios. They're good. They're good thought experiments. Okay, I want to get one thing out of the way first. According to my rough calculations, if an aircraft carrier sank and got stuck against the drain, the pressure would be enough to easily fold it up and suck it through. A thousand atmospheres. That's a lot. Cool. Also, where's the other end of the- It's also a funny exercise into how pressure works, because little bits of plastic can, can survive that no problem. This portal. I vote we put it directly above the Mars Curiosity Rift. <laughs> that way? <laughs> there you go. It'll accomplish its mission in finding water on Mars. And also a bit of life on Mars for the water, though temporarily. Life on Mars? Death on Mars? It'll find death on Mars? Okay. It can finally find incontrovertible evidence of liquid water on Mars's surface. <laughs> so what happens back on Earth when the portal opens? Not much. It would take hundreds of thousands of years for the ocean to drain. Even though the opening is wider than a... I mean, as far as Earth on a ground scale is right, not initially, but locally you might see a drop in the local sea level, just mainly just from the pressure difference because it's pulling in such an aggressive rate. Any nearby vessel structure ecosystem is going to be severely disrupted, to say the least. And it could potentially affect areas a bit further out. Now, I'm assuming this portal stays open via magic. Man, you're just thinking the, the tonnage of water flowing through something like that. There is, I mainly think of piping and pressurized systems in a nuclear power plant. Um, you're looking at, you would look at extreme corrosion, extreme um, blockage, flow getting restricted because the ocean is far from pure water, but here we're, I'm assuming the magic prevents all that from happening. But those are, those are real concerns in a, in, in a nuclear power plant. And it uses, it doesn't use seawater directly for anything, even, even in a tertiary loop pumping to the main condenser. And that's kind of your best case scenario. But those are typically done by external reservoirs rather than just the ocean. And that's the same sort of system that goes in the the non-nuclear part of the plant. It's the part would just cool the condenser. So nowhere close to the nuclear part of the plant that lies within the containment structure. All of that water is quite heavily purified and is subject to the most extreme corrosion, degradation, and chemistry controls that I've ever seen. <laughs>
<laughs> in terms of what their their standards are for flow, pH, conductivity, those sorts of parameters. You also might have some seismic effects in the area. Just that's a pretty big pressure difference, and we're gonna assume it's sustained for the purpose of this scenario. Basketball court, and the water is being forced through at incredible speeds. <laughs> the oceans are huge. Yeah. The water level would drop by much less than a centimeter per day. There wouldn't even be a cool whirlpool on the surface because the opening is just too small and the ocean is too deep. Really? Not even a small one? I mean, I figured that drawing was a bit of an exaggeration, but I guess it means you wouldn't really, you wouldn't really see m much of anything. Eh, I would have lost that bet. But let's suppose we speed up the draining by opening more or bigger drains at the bottom of Challenger Deep. <laughs> here's how the world looks at the start, and here's the map after the oceans drop 50 meters. It's pretty similar, but there are a few small changes. Great Britain, Sri Lanka, New Guinea, Java, and Borneo are all now connected to their neighbors. And I mean, I guess you'd get there eventually. I wonder if this is one crazy method for extracting uranium from seawater. Because I mean, I guess this is one way to get water to flow quickly, though I still wouldn't recommend it just trying to make any filtration or absorbent system that can withstand that kind of pressure isn't your best solution. Because once you get your water, you would have to deploy a lot of absorbent materials that have selective permeability for uranium ions, retrieve the membranes, extract them using a chemical process that releases uranium from the chemical bonds in the membranes. And this is too, too fast of a process and too much pressure that you just break everything. Though it is interesting that extracting uranium from seawater is technically feasible, but, but not, a, not an efficient process at all. I would give it roughly the similar levels of challenges that nuclear fusion has in terms of just not being efficient enough, not being cost effective enough that something like that would work. But maybe we'll get there in the future. Be interesting. What would we get first? Nuclear fusion, uranium extraction for seawater, or magical portals to place at the bottom of oceans. And after 2,000 years of trying to hold back the sea, the Netherlands is finally high and dry. Some of the dikes they built would now be holding in the sea rather than holding it out. And that's, that's true, because um, the, the bits of water that don't flow into the ocean, they would still be there, because really we just talked about this portal and everything that is connected to the ocean. So it's not necessarily all amounts, all of the water on Earth, just most of it. As world experts on reclaiming land from the ocean, now that they're no longer preparing for the constant threat of a cataclysmic flood, they could turn their energies outward, expanding onto the newly revealed sea floor. When the sea level reaches minus 100 meters, the Black Sea stops shrinking because it's no longer connected to the ocean. As the water level falls, more and more basins get cut off from the drain in the Pacific. Depending on the details of the sea floor in each basin and the exact speed of draining, the outflow of water might carve a deeper channel, allowing it to flow for long. That would be fascinating to, to see but most basins will at some point become landlocked and stop draining. By 200 meters of sea level fall, the map... That makes sense, because eventually, once it stops, because you, you won't have the pressure gradient to keep knocking off the, uh, the sides of those basins. ...is really starting to look weird. New islands are appearing. Indonesia is a big blob. The <laughs> Netherlands now controls much of Europe. At 500... <laughs> so the Netherlands conquers the world in this timeline. <laughs> Meters, Japan becomes a causeway that connects the Korean peninsula with Russia. New Zealand gains new islands. The Netherlands expands north. After the top kilometer of the oceans have drained, the Arctic Ocean becomes cut off and its water level stops falling. Did the Netherlands create this portal in this timeline? I'm wondering. <laughs> this is getting more interesting by the minute. New Zealand, which appropriately was named after a province in the Netherlands, continues to grow dramatically. Meanwhile, the Old Zealanders cross the land bridge into North America. When the sea is dropped by two kilometers, we see new islands popping up left and right. The Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico lose their connections with the Atlantic. I don't even know what New Zealand is doing. I don't think New Zealand knows either, but it's in keeping with its Dutch names. This is hilarious, but this is, this is slow enough that people can actually react to it. I mean, yeah, there's still going to be the massive loss of life that seems to be occurring in a lot of these what-if scenarios, but... It's a lot slower than some of the other ones. The everyone jumping in Rhode Island scenario seems far more immediately destructive to humanity. I'll pin that one down in the comment below if you haven't seen my reaction to that one yet. At three kilometers, many of the peaks of the Mid-Ocean Ridge, which is the world's largest mountain range, break the surface. 
vast swaths of rugged new land emerge and prepare to be overrun by Dutch engineers. By five kilometers, most of the major oceans have become disconnected and stopped draining. The exact locations and sizes of the various inland seas are hard to predict, but by this point, New Zealand and Old Zealand are almost certainly reunited. When the drain finally empties, there is a surprising amount of water left, although a lot of it consists of very shallow seas with a few trenches where the water might be as deep as four or five kilometers. Vacuuming up so much of the ocean would massively alter the climate and ecosystems in ways that are hard to predict. At the very least, it would almost certainly involve a collapse of the biosphere and mass extinctions at every level. So this is interesting. What would actually happen to Mars? I mean, yeah, Mars would get all the water. So Mars's atmospheric pressure and temperature would go up just because of that massive amount of water. Might take a while for Mars to develop a water cycle similar to Earth, but I guess it could happen. The water is going to interact with the Martian soil, could potentially release greenhouse gases on Mars, and Mars needs some greenhouse gases in order to make it more Earth-like. Probably would be some ice formation just because Mars is that much colder. And if enough microorganisms survive the trip, not sure if they can survive these interdimensional portals. There could be that potential for life on Mars in this scenario. Though Mars doesn't have much of an atmosphere, doesn't have much of a magnetic field, so it's possible some of it could be lost to the solar wind. And it's going to be cold, so this is probably not the best way to go about terraforming Mars. But it's possible, if unlikely, that humans could manage to survive. <laughs> True. And if enough of water is retained in some of those bases, you could still use waterborne nuclear power plants. Now, there are several nuclear power plant designs that do not use water directly as a coolant or a moderator. But for, say, a liquid sodium reactor, water is still used in the processing of liquid sodium. So you'd run out of liquid sodium pretty quickly if you if you didn't have water. But here we still have water, as well as in the, involved in the manufacturing of various gas-cooled reactors. Though the bigger issue is probably you wouldn't have humans for much for longer if you didn't have water. And as I've already explained in previous videos, nuclear power plants don't last very long without reactor operators. There's just so many built-in safety features to safely shut down the reactor that if you lose the grid, you're going to lose the nuclear power plant. The Dutch are, after all, famous for engineering their way up. This scenario is hilarious, though. The Dutch conquer Earth and presumably are on their way to conquer Mars in this scenario as well. Out of natural disasters, we'd be in good hands. This one's awesome, and I really was not expecting this scenario to go the way that it is. I also like the little Dutch flags and the credits as a nod. Not sure if they were always there. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.